We're in Singapore. It's day two of Breakpoint 2024, and I'm chatting with Haram, who is the CEO and co-founder of Dabba. How are you? How's your Breakpoint? Good. It's going amazing. We've got a ridiculously good response, met hundreds of people. This yep. conference has been awesome. Awesome. Now, um, I'm a little bit familiar with Dabba, but for the people that are watching, I want 30 seconds as a uh, in the TLDR or elevator pitch, but keeping it simple on what Dabber is. For sure. Um, so Dabber is very simple. We're an internet service provider in India. So India has a very interesting challenge where we're the second largest telecom market in the world. We've got nearly a billion 5G subscribers, but what's hilarious is less than 5% of Indians have ever accessed Wi-Fi because broadband just does not exist in their homes or offices. And so we want to be able to change that because the telecom networks are now choked because Indians are the most data hungry people on the planet. The average Indian consumes something like 40 gigabytes a month and the average Indian has about two SIM cards. Wow. So our networks are running at absolute capacity. So over the next decade, there's going to be this massive rollout of something like 500 million broadband connections. Crazy. And we'd like to make a dent in that market. Awesome. Now, uh, I have a little bit more background information watching a couple of segments of podcasts in the past. So Elon Musk, Starlink, you said that will not work in India. Yes. There are multiple reasons for this. So the first thing to note is regulatory reasons. Um, India has very restricted airwaves, so it's going to be a while before they allow something like Starlink in. The second thing is Starlink was designed for sort of remote access uh, in a bunch of areas. India's got an incredibly dense population. It cannot cover the kind of capacity that we need. And we know this firsthand because a fair amount of Starlink senior leadership um, are investors and backers of our project. Nice. So we have an excellent idea of what the technical capabilities of their system are, and it cannot handle the density that we have in our market. So Starlink's a long way away for a country like India. Okay. And Deba, how's Deba been going in terms of growth and getting more users and getting, I guess, more operators because it's kind of specialized hardware? Yeah, right? for sure. Um, growth has been spectacular. Um, we're live across three cities now. We've got more than 5,000 paying subscribers. Uh, what we do is in the same way that Airbnb and Uber aggregate providers in the market already, we do the same where India has this fascinating history of 150,000 tiny local cable operators. These guys are people that have a couple of hundred subscribers each. They've got a satellite dish pointed at the sky and they provide cable TV. Okay. Now everybody has switched to watching Netflix and Prime yeah. Video and that sort of thing. So all of these providers have to turn into micro ISPs or die. Yeah. So what we're doing is helping enable them with the right hardware, the right software to turn their businesses into ISPs and grow their market. Cool. So we're going to aggregate uh, all of these providers and dramatically expand um, sort of connectivity from the grassroots up in the country. Okay, fantastic. One thing I never, um, I never got perfectly well previously was I always thought to myself, Dab is like one country. That's not, you know, you want to be able to go everywhere. But I guess when you've got a billion people as an addressable market, that's brilliant. Yeah, but we absolutely intend to explore and uh, next year expand to other developing countries because yeah. it's the same set of problems they face as India faces. The reason that we're focused on India is, so we're trying to build the idea of an ISP in a box. Yeah. Where, you know, in a shipping container, we can dump a wi bunch of Wi-Fi routers, bunch of switches, all of the necessary equipment, ship that to somebody uh, on the other side of the planet, and they should be able to connect hundreds of subscribers instantaneously. Cool. So in order to refine that system, we're going to focus on India uh, for a while. Yeah. And once we have that going, we're sure as hell is going to expand across Africa, Southeast Asia, South America, that sort of thing. All right. Now, if someone wants to learn more about Debo, like what's the Twitter or what's the call to action? Where do they go to find out more information? The best place to visit is Debo.network or Debo.com. We've got our Explorer, which is live. We've got a detailed Git book. We've got interviews with users, local cable operators. It's an excellent place to start the journey of discovery. Awesome. And as a, a founder of a project in a, in a hustler, what one bit of advice could you give to either a crypto user, if it's crypto related, or someone wanting to build, or like a, an entrepreneur in India, or it, whatever. What's your best piece of advice? Oh, um, I'll say this straight to the person watching. Community is everything. 
Uh, we've been lucky enough to have really loyal, rabid, passionate followers. But the one thing is, you can spend as much time as hustling as you want, but the amount of value and growth and support that your community will give you is nothing compared to anything that any VC or investor or that sort of thing can offer you. So if you focus on your community, the kind of rewards that you get are insane. We were slow to learn that. Don't be the same. <laughs> Do it from the beginning. Learn from your mistakes. Wonderful. Thank awesome. you. Great, great advice.